welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Boeing 787-10 which is the default plane for the Microsoft Flight Simulator and it comes with the premium deluxe version. In this regard, I'm just making some videos and uploading them on my channel. Before this, I've done uh, two or three videos in which I've told you how to configure the CDU, how to connect the CDU with a SimBrief account and how to configure the CDU itself. Uh, so in this video, I will tell you how to start the plane from the cold and dark state. Then I will do a second video in which I will tell you how to take this plane up in the air and um, uh, fly it on autopilot. Then the third video will cover the descent management and ILS approach and landing. So in this video, I will tell you how to start the plane from the cold and dark state, especially for the beginners who are at a very beginners level of the simulation and uh, they are not really familiar with the controls of the plane and how to configure the CDU. Um, I will try to keep things very basic and simple so that everybody can just take uh, something out of this video. And if you know anything more than me, then the comment section is there for you. You can always add to this video. Uh, before I begin, uh, I would just like to tell you different uh, parts of the cockpit you should be really familiar with because uh, as a beginner, uh, you will be just uh, looking around <laughs> and wondering uh, what are these different parts and what are the functions carried out by different parts of the cockpit. So first of all, you will see um, uh, the, um, the controls in front of you. Just let's talk about them. Uh, this screen is uh, the primary flight display. This is a navigation display, and it also has uh, ICAS, which is engine indicating and crew alerting system. Uh, then you have uh, your CDU over here um, on the pedestal. Uh, the CDU is for the captain, obviously, and uh, for the first officer, there are two basically screens over here, but it's a one screen, but it, uh, there are two CDUs over here. And then you have the communication panel, you have your throttle, the speed brakes, and uh, then over here, the flaps. This is the glare shield, it has got three parts. Uh, this one is the mode control panel, uh, this whole thing, uh, with the help of which you can interact with the, the autopilot, um, um, arm the auto throttle, you can set the heading, and then you can uh, set the speed, uh, you can uh, set the altitude and everything and also disengage the autopilot using this button. Then on the overhead panel, um, you have different parts of the overhead panel. Once I will go through the cold and dark start starter procedures, I will take you through all the controls. But uh, just to begin, these knobs are for the iris alignment, which is inertial reference system, uh, which gives the GPS coordinates to the flight management guidance system. Uh, this panel is uh, for the electrical controls. And then you have your hydraulic controls over here, the panel for the hydraulic, con hydraulic controls, uh, passenger signs, then you have uh, your lights for the cockpit, then external lights, the landing lights. And then you have uh, fuel pumps over here, anti-ice, and then more external lights for the plane. Then you have your air conditioning panel. If you want to have a good look of the panel, overhead panel, you can press control 8 and you can simply go over here as well. That's it. And then you have the heads-up display. Okay, so this was some little introduction of uh, the plane and uh, of the cockpit. So let's uh, uh, start with the power-up procedures and power-up checks, some checks that we have to do. First of all, turn on the battery. If you go to the overhead panel, you will see this button over here. Once you turn on the battery, you will see the navigation display and the ICAS coming to life and plus the CDU also. The both uh, sides are up for the CDU. Now you have to do some checks. Just make sure that the parking brake is set, which is over here. It has to be set. Then the um, hydraulic pumps should be off, but the pri primary hydraulic pump should be on, left and right. They should be like this. And the central uh, electric pumps, C1, C2, and demand electric pumps, the left and right, they should be off. That's it. And now um, make sure that the vipers are off. The left uh, viper and the right viper is off. And uh, what else? Gear lever is down. Throttle is in the idle position. And uh, stab trim uh, switches are covered, although you cannot interact with them, but just have a look at it. And uh, then the fuel control switches are in the cutoff position over here, down. You turn them on once you are turning on the engines. And then the alternate flap selector is also covered and off, which is over here. This is actually uh, an option uh, to use when uh, uh, you want to control the flaps using the electrical systems rather than hydraulic systems. And uh, the flaps are fully retracted, as you can see. If I just uh, go over here, sorry, uh, control 4, if you press it, you can see the flaps are 
fully retracted and then the speed brake is also retracted that's it now um, all you have to do is this you have to turn on the external power uh, before i proceed i would just like to tell uh, you something related to the electric power of uh, the plane the plane gets its power from um, different sources one is the battery another one is the external power then your apu and then the engines so in order to have um, initial power in the plane, obviously you, you have to turn on the batteries so that you can um, uh, do some radio communication call and for the ground services. Once you have uh, the electric power, uh, uh, external power available, you can turn it on. It's um, um, a GPU van which is connected to the plane. It provides power till the time all the ground services are being carried out. Uh, once uh, the ground services are over and you're ready to push back to go for a flight, then you have to turn on the APU, which is the auxiliary power unit. This switch is over here. You will turn your uh, power on for the auxiliary power. And uh, it's a generator at the back of the plane, which provides power to the plane till the time engines are up. Once you have APU and you uh, before the pushback, you actually uh, disconnect the external powers. Um, in this plane, it's done automatically. And you will see once I will turn on the APU, uh, the external power will be automatically uh, cut off. Uh, as soon as we have power coming in from the APU. And then once you have uh, the APU running, you can do uh, the pushback. And once you turn on the engines, then you have to turn off the APU because then the power will be coming from the engines. So this was a little introduction. Just wanted to let you know how things work in this plane. Now you can see there are two power external powers, forward external power and aft external power. Just turn on and the forward external power. No need for the aft external power. It's only for the maintenance purposes. Uh, so just go with this external power. Now you can see the lights on the overhead panel and plus uh, the navigation display is also up. Uh, sorry, the primary flight display is also up and plus, you know, you can hear, hear, hear some air sounds coming in the plane. Uh, just press this button, get rid of the caution. And um, you can see uh, right now the PFD and the um, navigation display are not showing anything because uh, uh, it's waiting for the common computing resources or the CCR to be up and running which will take roughly 15 to 20 seconds once you have uh, the CCR available then you will see information coming over here on the primary flight display and the navigation display so before we proceed further we have to go through the preliminary pre-flight procedures so what are these preliminary pre-flight procedures <laughs> a nice one okay so um, let's just press control 3 and go to the CDU you will see this page ident which will have uh, the information of the engine trend 1000 and plus the air rack cycle which is from December 28th to January 24th 2024 this is actually a database which consists information uh, related to the airports the waypoints and the airways uh, the air rack cycle has to be updated uh, luckily and for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the ARAC cycle is always updated. And if you're using any third-party flight planning tool, then the ARAC cycle also should be updated because if there is any disconnect, the dates are not matching, your ARAC cycle is old in the third-party uh, solution, and then I think you'll get some waypoints or maybe airways uh, which are not available over here uh, in this version of the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just make sure it's like this. Okay. Uh, then you have to do some settings over here. Go to index and go to settings. And over here you will see this option coming IRS align time. Uh, this is actually inertial reference system uh, align time. Um, it takes some time. And if you set it to real, if you press this button, you will see uh, the real is now active. It will take seven to eight minutes uh, for the IRS alignment. And plus this is instant, will be done right now. And accelerated will I think take two to three minutes. So it's totally up to you uh, which setting you want to use. I always use instant because and then, you know, you have to don't don't have to wait for 78 minutes. So this is one thing that you have to do. Another thing, uh, you can uh, connect the CDU with your SimBrief account. So if you go to the index, uh, you sorry, yeah, you go back to settings and uh, you can see uh, two pages coming up over here. Uh, one slash two. This is the first page for the settings. And if you press this page, uh, next page button, you will go to the next page. And over here, you can get the same brief ID and, uh, or username, whatever you want to add, enter. And, um, um, and it will be connected to your SimBrief account. And it, right now, it says status active because I already have my SimBrief user ID entered it over here. You can just get the ID. Just type it in here uh, by using this uh, keyboard on the left side. And then you can press this button adjacent to the user ID. And it will be entered. 
and then you can clear it. So that's it. Uh, this is uh, number two. Now number three, you have to get uh, the weight and balance information uh, from the operational flight plan and then you have to import it over here. So if I go to uh, the settings, you will see weight and balance. So over here, passenger count is coming and total cargo. Uh, the payload percentage right now, it's 24%, zero fuel weight and the fuel is coming. It's actually set by this um, interface. But for this flight, I will not be using this interface to set the fuel and the weight. So that's why we'll be using a SIMBRI for this video. I have actually uh, done a, a very um, long video, I think approximately 40 minutes video, how to configure the CDO. Uh, if you want to get into the details of the flight planning and how to do that, you can just go and watch this, uh, watch that video. But for this video, I'll just try to keep things uh, to the point, short and crisp regarding the CDO configuration. So let's get to a SIM brief and make a flight plan and then import the weight and balance uh, and plus fuel settings uh, from uh, the SIM brief. Now this is the SIM brief. Uh, interface it's very easy if you're a beginner uh, a few things will be a bit overwhelming for you but i'll just try to keep it simple uh, you have to just enter your departure airport which will be oerk uh, riyadh uh, king khalid international airport this is actually a flight that i took uh, six seven years back for the first time with boeing 787 uh, from riyadh to abu dhabi i think almost five, five, five six years back if i'm not wrong uh, then you have to select the aircraft type, which will be Boeing 787-10-10. Uh, uh, let's uh, search for it. And here it is. Variant of the airframe. Working title 787-10. Just make sure you select this. Otherwise, uh, you, they, they will be disconnected in the passenger and the, and the weight calculation. So you have to select the right variant of the airframe. Then you have to enter the cost index. It, it actually determines uh, the fuel burning rate of the plane. If um, you use a small number, the range increases, less fuel is burned, uh, but plane can go for a longer uh, distance. And if you're using high number, the plane will go at a high speed and obviously burn more fuel. So for this video, I'm using 100. If you want to use 20, 30, if you want to increase the range, you can do that. Uh, now, um, coming to the departure runway, I will be using 33 right and uh, for uh, Riyadh and 31 left for Abu Dhabi International Airport. The altitude for this flight will be 38,000 as it's entered over here now. Passengers, I can take, uh, sorry, I'll just click here and then I'll take full passengers. Payload is auto automatically set to auto. No need to use this. That's it. So now this flight plan is, uh, is ready. You don't have to do anything else. If you are at a certain level of expertise, then you can obviously play around with the, uh, with the uh, flight planning over here. But as a beginner, it is more than enough for you. You can see the route is now updated over here. You can see this is the standard instrument departure, a procedure for uh, just um, uh, flying out of an airport. And this is your star, which is standard terminal arrival uh, to fly in, uh, to um, an airport or runway, uh, whatever you have selected. And then you have your waypoints in alpha values and then your airways in alphanumeric values. That's it. Now uh, you can generate uh, the flight plan. Now, uh, in order to import the flight plan in um, the Boeing 787-10, you have to generate the flight plan, otherwise it will not work. So you have to generate it. And plus, if you want to view the PDF or the operational flight plan, you can click this option and you can see the operational flight plan. Now, the estimated takeoff weight is coming, uh, 184 tons or 184,734 kgs. Then the landing weight is coming and the zero fuel weight, the weight of the plane without the fuel, but with the passengers and with the cargo. This is the fuel. And you can see uh, the final reserves coming, uh, five tons. Uh, this uh, information you have to enter, so you can just write it down somewhere. I'll also write it. Uh, the reserves are five tons. Yes. Or you can round it off to 5.1 tons. That's it. And now um, the runways that you're using, 33 right, as you guys told you before, 31 left. So this is your uh, flight path. And then your weather information. Uh, if you scroll down, you will see um, for the departure and for the destination. Over here, we have to just read this line and get some information from here. The QNH or the barometric pressure or the atmospheric pressure is 1012 in QNH. This is the unit in which it's given. And uh, plus the outside temperature is coming as 27 degrees right now. And uh, it's a bit hot. It's all the 
wind is but bit hot over here in real and then you have wind so this is uh, the direction of the wind 240 knots so just take 240 knots this is the direction and plus uh, the speed is 11 knots and that's it so this is the information that you need uh, from the operational flight plan so now i'm in the plane and i can press control 3 go over here and set uh, from operational flight plan now you can see the fuel changing over here it's now changed um, there is 6.6 .6 tons in the left uh, tank and 6.6 .6 tons on the right uh, tank uh, it should be balanced nothing in the uh, center tank the gross weight is coming and the total fuel 13.3 tons it's coming uh, center of gravity this is what you have to note it's 31.52 or 31.5 you have to use the center of gravity uh, for the takeoff performance calculations that's it so now i'm uh, done with the preliminary pre-flight procedures what i can do is this i can just go back go over here on the overhead panel and turn on uh, the iris alignment as you can see the common computer resource is still not available because i haven't turned on the iris so as soon as i turn on this you will see now they are available and uh, you can see some information over here now let's um, uh, start the pre-flight procedures and uh, let's go back to the CDU and uh, let's uh, start doing the flight planning it's very easy just go here go to index and just uh, start following uh, this sequence first of all positioning then performance then thrust limit takeoff and approach approach I will not be using in this video because uh, it's uh, related to the landing but I will be just going through all these points. First of all, go to this option position and uh, select the reference airport, which is OERK and enter it over here. That's it. Now press this button root and go here and request root. Now the root will be imported uh, from the sim brief, but the sit and star will not be updated. The standard instrument departure and standard terminal arrival okay now when you see this message just uh, load or purge if you purge obviously it will be deleted you can load it and now it's loaded press execute after every step if you see this green light over here on the execute button you have to execute in order to make sure that uh, this information is now stored the runway is uh, 33 right so i will enter 33 right that's it now, if I go over here in this option, legs, you will see all the waypoints and airways up updated. Now, this flight plan is coming. Now, there's another thing that you have to do is to set the departure and the arrival. Uh, for the departure, uh, you can see the runway 33 right is already set. There is also another runway coming, ILS 33 right, a heads up uh, display takeoff, which is for the low visibility. So, for this video, I will use this first option. And then you have to get uh, the SID, which is the standard instrument departure. So if you go to the uh, operational flight plan, and you go over here, you will see ALTA V1K. This is the SID, and uh, the star is UKILI 4C for 31 left. Okay, so this is uh, what you have to enter. So ALTA 1K is coming, although uh, in the plan it had V in it, uh, but it's a short string over here, so that's why it has. Uh, just um, omitted a V but you can select this and press execute now press index and go for arrival and uh, for the runway select ILS 31 left if you cannot see the runway you can scroll by pressing this button next page so 31 left and uh, then just scroll and select the star so it's UKIL 4C now for the transition, there are two transitions coming, Itrin and Pigam. I'll tell you how to select this. Um, you should have access uh, to the airport charts. Uh, it's very important. It's necessary to have it. You can download them if you can find uh, them over the internet. Or otherwise, you have to get an Evigraph subscription. Or if you're using any other tool which has the airport charts, it's uh, good to have them. Now, um, I will just uh, try to import the flight plan. Now, uh, over here for uh, Abu Dhabi, I have to select uh, 31 left. I'll just go over here. 
and I will see which point to be used. So there are two points coming, Pegum and Itrin. As you can see, if you're coming from this side, then you're using Pegum as a transition. And if you're coming from this side, likewise, as you can see, this line is coming to this point exactly at Itrin. So this is the transition that I will be using. So let's select Itrin and press Execute. Now go to this option legs, go back, press Control 3 and uh, select this option map. You can adjust the view by zooming out a bit. And in this view, just keep on pressing this button step and then you will go through all the waypoints of the flight in order to see if there's any issue, discontinuity or any problem in the flight plan. Right now you can see it's good and uh, as you can see, it uh, is selected so that's why there is no discontinuity in it. That's why and select map again and that's it. So now we are done with this. Press initial reference, go to the index page. Now as we have done uh, positioning, we have uh, done the routing. Now uh, the performance, go to this page. And now you have to get the zero fuel weight. It's very simple, just press this button. You will see the zero fuel weight coming over here. Just press it again and it will be populated. Reserves, as uh, we've seen it before, it's 5.1 tons. So just enter 5.1 over here. And uh, the cruising altitude, it's already uh, populated because of the sim brief. Cost index will be 100. That's it. Now you have the cost index. Now go over here uh, to thrust limit and uh, you will see different thrust settings coming for the takeoff and for the climb. Just to give you an introduction, if you're new to the flight planning and uh, performance, takeoff performance calculation, uh, this is actually a takeoff performance uh, with the, your D-rated settings for the engines. Because obviously, if you can just uh, take off and fly at uh, a D-rated um, engine setting, then why use a full throttle and pull, put more stress on the engines and, and burn more fuel and, you know, reduce the life of the engines. So that's why takeoff performance calculation is used. Pre previously, it was not available in this plane, but now you can do it using the electronic flight back or the EFB. Right now, you can see that uh, the takeoff TPR, which is the turbofan um, power ratio, it's set to 86.6%. If I select 10%, it will be reduced by 10%. And if I do minus 20%, it will be reduced by 20%. So let's keep it here. We don't have to do anything over here. It will be automatically selected. For, but for the climb, you can do different settings. Uh, if it's set to the maximum over here, then the, once the plane starts climbing after the takeoff, it will climb at a... Um, at, at, a, at, a, at a higher rate or a higher TPR and with one and two settings it will be at some lower setting so I always use this option uh, but you can always change it now go to this option takeoff and we have to do some takeoff performance calculation before this press control 3 oh, sorry uh, control 3 and uh, adjust the altimeter why do we adjust the altimeter uh, the plane reads in the altitude because of uh, the barometric pressure. So you have to adjust it. Whatever it is, you have to enter the barometric pressure and according to that, the altimeter is adjusted. As you can see, this uh, line is coming. So this is where it should be. There is right now a difference. I can change the units. Right now you can see 1013 HPA. It's the standard uh, barometric pressure. So um, the one that we took from... Uh, uh, the same brief, it was 1012, so I can just like reduce it to 1012 and now it's set. That's it. You, in order to do the takeoff performance calculation in the EFB, you first of all have to set this barometric pressure. Then you can come to the electronic flight bag. Uh, only right now, uh, the takeoff performance calculation is there uh, over here, but I think maybe in the future, more options will be updated. First of all, click this option, initialize flight, go to performance, and then copy flight management computer data or the FMC data. Airport is coming, runway is coming, and uh, condition, uh, dry conditions, wind is, uh, as uh, we've taken it before, um, uh, from the sim brief, it's 240 degrees 11 knots. So 240 slash 11. Outside temperature is 27 degrees. You can see QNH is already updated. Uh, thrust rating, keep it at um, optimum. Uh, you can also use uh, maximum 
or deriden but if you select optimum and let uh, the electronic flight back do the calculation for you flap configuration also optimum you can also select flaps again but select optimum and then it will give you the flaps that you will be requiring for this flight and nti's configuration uh you can you can turn it off you can keep it engine or engine auto i'll keep it at auto although in the condition in which i am flying there will be no nti's issue but let's keep it at auto and then center of gravity is 31.5 let's enter it over here and that's it now press calc okay now it will calculate it for you uh, you will see this uh, uh, thing coming atm which is assumed temperature method so uh, during the uh, takeoff performance calculation the system actually assumes a temperature a higher temperature uh, than uh, than the actual temperature outside and then it calculates all the speeds and the thrust for the engine uh, why do why do you do that because you know obviously you don't want to put so much stress on the engine and if you can just uh, take off at a, a lower rate then why need a maximum um, um, tpr so that's why it assumes the temperature right now select temperature is coming as 52 degrees centigrade so it's it's higher than the outside temperature so the flight management guidance system will understand that uh, it's very hot outside so it will try to put less stress on the engines by reducing the tpr so it's uh, the uh, uh, the power given to the engines is derated by 22 as you can see dto2 is coming 54.1% flaps will be set to 5 and the runway is 33 right take off gross weight is coming and you have your v1 vr and v2 speeds v1 is the speed at which uh before which uh, you can uh, decide to abort the runway because you know this uh, take off performance calculation is done um, on the basis of the length of the runway uh so with this speed if you cross a certain distance and you try to stop the runway will finish and there will be a big accident so that's why this is the speed before which you can still decide to abort the takeoff but at this speed you have to then reach vr which is the rotate speed and then you have to take the plane up in the air and then you try to reach uh, v2 which is 157 knots it's the speed at which the plane uh, can fly if one engine fails i've talked to few of the pilots they say uh, in some airlines they have different procedures the airline that they were flying for they say we always add 10 to the v2 So if it's 157 they keep it at 167 to be on the safer side because you know if in case the engine fails the plane is at uh, 167 knots you can always turn around and land. Uh now you can do is this you can send the output to the FM C flight management computer or your CDU and press control 3 and go over here. You can see now it's updated flaps are coming thrust uh derated is coming and uh, that's it. you can accept it and uh, that's it uh, for the cg just press this button and uh, the cg will be also coming now you will see this message fmc pre flight complete okay uh now another thing that you have to do is this uh, for the vnav you have to set the transition altitude and uh, plus uh, the wind information how to get the transition altitude i'll just uh, take you through the navigraph charts uh, over there in the sid chart it will be given so let's load it and over here you will see and uh, this chart is coming for the sid or for the standard instrument departure it's 13000 feet the transition altitude it's actually an altitude at which you change um, the barometric pressure to standard as now i've set to 1012 once uh, you cross 13000 feet then you set it to standard uh so let's enter 13000 and press this button that's it Now uh what you have to do is this you have to get the climb forecast for the wind just go over here and uh, press uh, forecast request and now load Now um uh, temperature at different altitudes coming as flight level uh, 380 or 3000 feet temperature is minus 54 degrees centigrade and the wind is given 258 degrees uh, 121 knots high speed very uh, very windy <laughs> right now. Okay so at uh, different altitudes temperature is coming that's it so now you are done uh, with your uh, free flight uh, procedures okay uh, for the cdu uh, but it will carry on with the pre flight procedures for the overhead panel so what you can do is this 
Right now, if you go to this option checklist, you will see the pre-flight procedures. The parking brake is set, fuel control switch is on. If you go before start procedures, and then you have to go through all these. Just remember this plane, you have to go and uh, go through all the checklists. Okay? It's very important. Otherwise, you will, you will get an error if you don't go through the checklist. Now, let's go to the overhead panel by pressing Control 8 and just go through the overhead panel and do all the settings. Now, in order to go through the overhead panel, you just go in this sequence, uh, top to bottom and left to right. So we'll go like this, this, this and this. This is the sequence that we're going to follow. It's very simple. Just make sure that the flight control uh, surfaces, all both these uh, switches for the tail and for the wing, they show normal and they are covered. Iris, we have already set it on. Heading reference is showing normal. Uh, primary flight computers, uh, it's covered. And obviously you turn on the battery. Uh, these are the two buttons uh, for the in-flight entertainment system and passenger seats. They should be on. You can interact with them. So if you turn them off, <laughs> the uh, in-flight entertainment system will close. And cable neutrality, it's on. APU generator, uh, it's on. And you have your uh, generator control switches. They are showing off. And uh, drive disconnect switches, uh, they show drive and they are covered. Although I think you cannot interact with them. Okay. Now over here, you see this uh, battery test. You can test the battery. It says hi. It's used for towing. Uh, if you are towing the plane, then you know, turn on the power and you can just check how much power is in the battery, medium or low. Uh, flight direct, uh, flight deck door, uh, the power, let's turn it on. CCR reset. Uh, this is common computing resources, covered. Now the emergency lights should be armed and covered. So just uh, armed and uh, cover them. And the service intercom is off. Passenger oxygen covered on. Now coming to the window heat, just uh, turn them on. That's it. This is the ram turbine. Uh, you cannot interact with it. Required in case all the systems of the plane fail, then you get the power from the ram turbine. Hydraulic pumps, as I've told you before, just make sure uh, that the left and the right are on, but uh, the central um, uh, electric pumps C1 and C2 are off and demand electric pumps are off. Passenger signs, once you are complete, uh, you are done with the fueling, the fueling is completed, then you can turn on uh, the seatbelt signs. You can turn them on or you can set them to auto. If you set them to auto, then what happens is, is that right now on the ground, uh, the seatbelt signs will be on. As soon as the plane will cross 10,000 feet, they will turn off. And similarly, during the descent, uh, the descent will uh, will start and below 10,000 feet, the seatbelt signs will turn on again. But if you want to do it manually throughout the flight, then you can set it on. But I keep it at um, auto. Uh, vipers, we've already checked. Um, they're off. Uh, and now, um, these are the controls, um, uh, the light controls uh, for the overhead panel. You can see, you can increase or decrease uh, the brightness at uh, morning. That, that's why you cannot see it more. There's also a dome light in the plane. You can see uh, for the brightness in the night, especially used in the night, so that the ground staff can see in the cockpit. And uh, this is the master brightness. You can always adjust the master brightness. And now this is the control for the glare shield. So if I press control it and I go back again over here. So for the glare shield, uh, the floodlight and plus the brightness. You can increase or decrease the floodlight of it and press increase or decrease the brightness of the glare shield the backlights okay and that's it and uh, now uh, you can ignore this because you can interact with all these systems uh, these two switches are used for engine to start the engine so once I will be starting the engine then I will move them to start and uh, fuel pumps uh, right now they should be off but uh, before we we'll start the plane we have to turn on the fuel pumps anti-ice just set it to auto and at this point you can uh, Turn on the nav lights. Nav lights are basically lights on the wings of the plane and just to uh, show other planes which direction your plane is going in the night. Uh, can we just see it? If I just... Uh, uh, let me just go out. Okay. So on over here you will see this green light. So if uh, any other plane sees a green light, so it will know that the plane is going to this right side because you are looking at the plane from this side. And if you see um, a red light, then it means you, the plane is going towards the left in the night. 
and then you have uh, these very bright white lights uh, if i reduce uh, sorry not reduce change 1032 let's see now you can see these white lights okay so you're looking at the plane from the back so that's why uh, you turn on the nav lights and they remain on throughout uh, the flight and that's it so turn on the nav lights go back over here now cargo temperature you can always uh, adjust the cargo temperature and air conditioning uh, the equipment um, uh, cooling forward and aft uh, set to auto recirculation fans uh, should be on upper and lower fans the packs the air conditioning if you turn them on they will be set to auto now if you are familiar with the boeing 737 and uh, you have to turn off the air conditioning before you start the engines because um, uh, it needs bleed air uh, so that's why um, it's done but in this plane as mostly the systems are electrical so that's why they will keep on turning on and off automatically as it's done in the airbus a320 and for the pressure pressurization it's kind of a tongue twister for me. Okay, uh, you don't have to do anything and the right wiper is also off. Uh, just one thing I want to tell you that uh, this, these controls um, are for the brightness of the heads-up display. So if you click it, it will, you, you can pull it out and then you can adjust brightness, but I don't think so in this version right now it's working. Uh, so that's it. So these are the things that you have to uh, do uh, before uh, you do anything else. So just uh, press control 8 and now the pre-flight procedures are done. And now we have to run the pre-flight checklist. As I've done it before, so if you go to this checklist, you will see uh, it's there. And now I'm at the before start checklist. So now before start, what you have to do is this, that you have to set the V2 over here. As I've told you before, this is the speed at which the plane can fly with one engine. Uh, so it's uh, 157 knots, so you have to enter it over here. that's it now you have to enter the heading of the runway from which you will be taking off it's 33 right so let's get the heading of the runway so it's uh, 327 degrees as you can see it over here so oops let's uh, change it That's it. Now you have to set the altitude at which you, uh, which you will be flying. So uh, remember this thing that the altitude is uh, given to you by the ATC if you're flying with the ATC. So whatever the first clearance you get for the altitude, you have to set it over here. Or you can consult the airport charts, uh, sorry, uh, the Navigraph charts, uh, the SID, and see if there are any restrictions uh, throughout the takeoff. So for this uh, takeoff, there is no certain restriction. Um, there is no ceiling. Uh, but le let me just give you an example. If you're taking out, uh, taking off um, uh, out of uh, Heathrow Airport, uh, there is this point at which you should be not above uh, six thousand feet. You have to be six thousand feet and below. Uh, so in in the in these cases, you have to set an altitude. Let's say six thousand. If there is a ceiling, but if there is no ceiling, and then you can just simply climb to the altitude that you want to, and then once you take off, your autopilot will automatically. Uh, follow all the uh, altitude constraints uh, so right now i will set it to 38000 feet there is a ceiling uh, of 20000 feet um, uh, in this set but i will just set it to 38000 feet and once i turn on the autopilot and uh, i've activate the vnav then the plane will keep on uh, flying at 20000 feet till that point and then afterwards it will start to climb so i'm just going to set 38000 feet over here then i have to arm lnav and vnav uh, for this, first of all, turn on the auto throttle and you have to turn on the flight directors, then you can turn on the LNAV. So in case if you're wondering your LNAV is not working, you have to turn on the flight directors and plus um, the auto throttle. That's it. Now, um, that's it. You have uh, done all the settings. Everything is now set. Just make sure that the doors are closed. Now, as I will be starting the plane and we'll be um, heading towards the pushback and uh, make sure the doors are closed you can go over here and you can just click this option and you can see m coming manual but those all the doors are closed so if you were carrying out any ground services during the procedure and if any door is open you can see it over here so just make sure all the doors are now closed
Now you have to uh, turn on the hydraulic pumps and uh, you have to turn on the fuel pumps. So just go over here and for the hydraulic pumps, just set them to auto. And uh, you can turn on the fuel pumps. That's it. Uh, you can also see uh, the fuel pumps over here. You can see now uh, the fuel is getting pumped. Okay. The fuel pumps are not uh, running. And uh, what else? As now I'm uh, about to start the engine, so I have to turn on the, this light. A beacon. Beacon is actually a light which is on the top and at the bottom of the plane, as you can see over here. Uh, see, it's blinking. So it's at the top and the bottom. So this is actually an indicator which tells uh, the ground staff that you're going to start the engine so they clear uh, the area around the plane. That's it. And with this, um, you can also uh, turn on the logo light. It's actually at uh, the tail, which shows the logo. So if I just uh, go out, oops, and uh, I'll change the time, you can see the logo light is now there. Okay. So that's how you set it. So let's uh, change the time again to morning. I can keep it here. And uh, let's go back in the cockpit. Now um, I have to uh, run uh, the before start checklist. So if you go over here and uh, you can you can bring the checklist over here. I will tell you how to um, do all this uh, juggling with the screens. <laughs> It's very interesting, all the, all the controls, but I use the checklist over here, but you can also bring the checklist over here. As you can see, um, it can come here. Or what you can do is this, you can select this option MFT on the right side and then you can press checklist. Oop. Uh, it cannot get rid of the ICAS, so I can move the ICAS over there and then I can bring the checklist over here. So, you know, I'll just tell you now how to do this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, passenger signs, I've turned them on. Uh, yes, set to auto, so I can check it. Board control panel, we have set the V2, um, the heading and the altitude, it's all set. Uh, takeoff speeds, we have the takeoff speeds, CDU pre-flight, uh, we have uh, completed. Now we have to adjust the trim. Uh, so now the trim and that has to be set is 3.25, as you can see it on your screens. It's right now set to 8.50, nose up. So as per uh, the weight balance uh, of the plane, the nose should be down by 3.25. You have to set the trim. You can do it uh, by pressing, uh, sorry, um, you can see this is the place from where you can set the trim. It takes some time, but you can adjust the trim like this. Although I'm using uh, the Airbus uh, Thrustmaster uh, controller, uh, with that, it, it's done quickly. But it's, uh, it will take some time. Anyhow, you will be able to adjust uh, the trim. Five point two five. It should be in this green area, but uh, let's keep it at uh, three point two five. Because if you don't adjust the, the trim, then obviously uh, while taking off, you know the plane will automatically lift, lift off from the runway. You don't have to pull back on the yoke. So now it's done. As you can see, it's done. Um, it's all already green. And takeoff and uh, taxi briefing, it's done. Now um, you have done your before start checklist, so you can always get rid of it. You can just like uh, info, you can click this, uh, this, this button and then you can have the ICAS back on your side as well. And plus, uh, if you press this lift, you can have the system information. Now, uh, before I st uh, proceed, I, I would just like to tell you something. Uh, remember this thing that uh, the navigation display uh, will remain over here on the captain side. The ICAS will be up all the time. You cannot get rid of the ICAS. You can always switch it between uh, the left side and the right side, but ICAS will remain. As I told you before, this is the engine indicating and true alerting system. It gets all these alerts over here, and plus it shows you the engine. So uh, let's say if I want to, um, so left, can I have system on the left now? Now uh, for the multifunction display, I've pressed this button left. So if whatever the button I will then press, this will come on the left side, okay? checklist or it's not working or the navigation display if I press this then obviously it will come over here system it can come over here or what I can do is this I can do this on the right side I can press system and the system will also come over here and if I press lift I can bring the navigation display over here 
and uh, for the system you can see it's working uh, what I can do is this I can uh, do this and uh, the system will disappear now and the iCast will come over here and uh, at the below you will see that the, the CDU has disappeared so I, if I press over here the CDU will come back again uh, so that's how you can just uh, do all these settings and let's say on the uh, first official side you can see the system information is not coming so what I can do is this I can select left because I want to show it over here on the left side and I can press system and it will start coming over here that's it uh, now um, we have uh, done all the settings uh, the electric uh, demand uh, the hydraulic pumps are on automatically uh, turn on once we have the engine right now you can see uh, it's, they are not working, but as soon as I will turn on the engines, you will see hydraulic pumps coming to life because I've set them to auto, but you, if you turn them on, obviously, then the hydraulic pumps will be up. Now, before the pushback, you have to do a few things. Uh, you have to set the transponder to Expedia. Uh, you can see the transponder over here. Just move it to Expedia, and then uh, it's time to turn on the APU. So for the APU, you have to turn this switch first to start and then it will automatically come back to on. So just move it to on and um, you can see if I go to this page start, you will see the APU is now running, the RPM is coming and uh, the exhaust gas temperature is coming and the oil pressure is coming. Just wait for it to stabilize and that's it. Remember this thing that uh, at this time, you should be all, oh, only seeing these uh, options, the hydraulic pressure system left, right and center not working, engine is shut down, TCAS is off and fuel pressure engine left and right. You should be all, only seeing these options. If you press uh, the cancel and recall, you, you can scroll through um, uh, the different, uh, uh, what you can say, the warnings over here on the ICAS. Right now, as you can see on the second page, there's nothing coming and over here it's coming only four things. So they should be there. And once you start off, uh, start uh, the engines, then they will also disappear. And once you turn uh, the TCAS to uh, TRA, then it will also disappear. Otherwise, if there's any other error coming, you have to address it. As now you can see, uh, uh, the APU is now stable, the EGT is stable, the RPM is also stable. So you can just uh, go over here and you can see the external power is now cut off. That's it. Now what I can do is this, I can call for the pushback and um, I can release the parking brakes. So let's go over here, ground and uh, ground services, pushback and now I can release the parking brakes. Now let's do one thing and uh, turn traffic on over here and just zoom in. Now you will see even at the airport uh, chart over here. You can see the taxiways and everything, so I'll be taking off from here. So during the pushback, I will turn right. Okay. Now soon, uh, the pushback will start. That's it. Now, uh, let's uh, uh, save some time and turn on the engine. So what I can do is this. And go over here to overhead panel, and you can see engine start so just move this knob over here to start and then you have to turn on this uh, fuel control switch from cut off to on or to run position and now the engine two will be running the right engine and as you can see it's coming over here now it's time to call the tug to steer to the right And you can see now as the engines are running, um, these options are disappearing over here. And plus, uh, if you go over here to hydraulic, you can see the right hydraulic system is working because the right engine is now running. What I can do is this, I can also turn on the left engine. And uh, soon you will also see over here, uh, the left hydraulic, okay? I can now stop the pushback. I don't <laughs> I'm just, I think, on the ground. <laughs> Anyhow, I can just ignore this. The pushback tool is not really, really good over here in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay. So, that's it. Now you can see uh, the hydraulic 
uh, system is also working uh, for the left side okay and uh, that's it now you can see engine um, 2 is running let's wait for the engine 1 to get stable now it's also running so as now we have uh, power coming in from uh, you can see electric so the power is coming in from the engines so i can and it's also coming in from the apu you can always uh, turn off the apu so if i go here and the apu is now off so now we have power coming in from the engines so that's it now uh, with this you can also set the flaps so i can go here and i can set the flaps to five and you will see it on your screen this flaps are set to five because it's as per uh, the electronic flight back the takeoff performance calculation now you have to do uh, the flight control check uh, let me just get the controller and uh, do the flight control check you have to check whether all the systems are working or not the ailerons and the elevators uh, so if i go here and if i press this uh, option hydraulic so, sorry, flight control, not hydraulic. Hydraulic systems are running, and so that's why you will be um, able to control uh, the ailerons and the elevator. So, if you just pull it back, you can see the elevators are working now. Left, and then right, and you can see the rudder is also not working. So, everything is uh, good now, and... Uh, what we can do is this right now we can turn on the lights uh, for the takeoff so at this stage as now we have uh, the engines running you don't need all this information uh, you can get rid of it by pressing this button and that's it you will only see engine and plus the errors over here if there is any so you can move the ICAS uh, to the first officer side you can have uh, the full navigation display and you can just zoom in so that you can see the taxiways now you can see APU cool, uh, cool down uh, parking brake is set and doors are now set to auto uh, that's it uh, so TCAS uh, just uh, transponder you just set it to TRA and then turn on the lights so these are the lights uh, for the runway turn turn on uh, turn off lights left and right to see left and right and plus this is the taxi light so that's it so you have uh, the runway turn off lights and the taxi lights on that's it and with this you can also turn on the wing lights now we have to go through the before taxi checklist so just bring the checklist up click this option normal and then see so NTIs I've already set it to auto as you can see it over here set it to auto okay and recall I've done it recall is this actually you actually cancel and recall to see if there's any error coming so just press it and make sure there's no error coming recall is done auto break you have to set it to RTO it's not there flight controls we have checked ground equipment clear and APU is it off or no let's check yes it's off and that's it now you're through uh, the before taxi checklist click normal and see what comes up before takeoff we have also set the flaps normal and that's it so this uh, brings uh, to the end of the it brings us to the end of the video and uh, the second video uh, which i will make i will tell you how to taxi and take off and fly the plane on autopilot and then there will be a third video in which i will tell you how to um, do the descent management and land the plane using eyeless approach and landing procedures i hope um, you've learned something from this video and um, if you want to ask me any questions the comment section is there for you i'm a bit lazy in responding to the to the questions but i'll just try to be regular <laughs> over here now you can see the navigation display disappeared so let's uh, bring it up okay and uh, this this issue if you if you press cd over here this thing happens so just uh, press um, cd and it will come back 
Um, hopefully, you have learned something out of this video. And uh, if you want to add anything to it, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for staying with me. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get the latest updates. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.